Welcome. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you the intro riff to the song Money by Pink Floyd on the guitar. And I'm going to use that riff as an example to show you how I highly recommend that you practice and learn any new material on the guitar, especially melodic material, because that's what this is going to be, kind of a single note thing. How you practice that to really get it down, to really understand it, to internalize it, to master it, basically, so you can use it in your playing, so you can use it when you're improvising, so you can compose with it, play it anywhere on the guitar, that kind of thing. So it's very, very useful for really anything else that you want to play, but very fun to do these exercises with a super cool song, with a cool riff, with something recognizable. So the hint is that we don't just want to play anything that we're practicing over and over again in one place. We want to really break it down and understand what it is and then play it in multiple places on the guitar. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So first we will just learn that intro riff of Money by Pink Floyd on the guitar and we're going to talk about the theory structure of it. Then we're gonna review the scale that it comes from in all the positions that you can play that scale on the guitar. And lastly, we're gonna play that same Pink Floyd money guitar riff in every position that that scale exists on the guitar so we know it inside and out. It's super fun. I've put out a bunch of videos on how to master scale positions on the guitar, how to specifically practice them. So this is a way to start to apply that knowledge if you're working on scale positions and then you're working on some kind of material from a song. This is one of the ways to really apply that and use it and realize how useful it is to know your scale forms all over the fretboard. I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I talk a ton about music theory and mapping out the fretboard and doing that in a way that's very hands-on and very practical and useful for real music so we can have more control and express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome and please subscribe and hit the bell. So first, we're just going to learn the riff. It's going to be in B minor pentatonic. We're going to play that B note, which is the fifth string, second fret. You're going to play an octave above it, which is B again. This is the fourth fret on the third string. I'm kind of doing a palm muting thing. Don't worry about that yet or at all, really. It's, it's just a sound preference. You can mute a little bit or it's totally fine. So we're going to play with our pinky that third string, fourth fret, then third finger, same fret next string down fourth string uh fourth fret then first finger back on that note that we started on it's just outlining a power chord okay then we're going to go to the five i'll talk about the theory more in a second but this is second fret lowest string and then pinky on the fifth fret lowest string back to that first note we played and the last note is pinky on the fifth string fifth fret so And if you give a little bend on that last note, that could sound very cool. If you do do that, make sure you don't hear the bend come down. I did a video on uh, five tips for bending. That's one of the big ones to make things sound clean, to not have the bend come down um, in a lot of cases. I'll put a link to that video in the description. So here it is again. Just as a side note, again, since I talked about that, to not have the, the uh, bend come down, you want to prepare playing that string again with the right hand. And then play that note, okay? So that's what it is. Here's the theory of it. it this is from a B minor pentatonic scale. Um, so we want to know that scale form in this position. And if we do, here are the numbers of uh, what those, are called, they're called scale degree numbers. One, and then one again. So it's already useful to do this because then you have this very clear sense of, oh, those are the same note. One, one, five, one, five. Whoa, lots of ones and fives. That's what the power chord is. One, one, five, one, five, flat seven, one, flat three. Okay, one, one, five, one, five, flat seven, one, flat three. Okay, so if that's new to you, don't worry about that. Just think of that. Okay, wow, that's that is uh, a place to start working towards slowly on the guitar to have that understanding and that ability at least to slowly analyze what are the numbers of something. Um, so that's that's the kind of thing I very much advocate um, all the time. So again, if that's new, it's not going to be instant that you memorize that. We have to see the context of a scale to get used to that and start to see it uh, with a riff. But the reason I'm teaching this lesson on this riff and kind of breaking it down in this way, because once we understand how something is really what the anatomy 
of a riff is like that. Then we can start to use it in our own music and really use it to express ourselves and play it anywhere on the guitar. So the next step that we wanna do is make sure that we know the five scale forms that that riff comes from. So it's B minor pentatonic, so we wanna be able to practice and play the five places that B minor pentatonic exists. I will put a link in the description to a video I did on the five scale forms of minor pentatonic. I'll show you them here as well, but I did one on just specifically how to work on just mapping out the scale so you understand it well. Once you do understand scales well, you can apply music to it in this way. But let's review the five scale forms in uh, B minor pentatonic. So here's the first one. The spelling of the scale is one flat three. It skips two. That's why it's, it's called a pentatonic scale. It has five notes, five notes. I'm holding the pick in one, in one finger there. Five notes and um, a diatonic scale, which means this diatonic is kind of meaning including all the notes, which are seven notes. So a diatonic scale, a normal scale, a full scale has seven notes in it. Pentatonic has five notes. So we don't call this one and call this two and then three, four, five. There are five notes, one, two, three, four, five, one starts back at that, but the labeling of them skips the two. One, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one. So it's very, very beneficial to know that. You might have that totally down and know that already, but if that's new, start thinking about, wow, that's, that's how I wanna know the scales. That's how I wanna know melodies and really see all the music that we're playing on the fretboard. Um, it really is how we, how we get the fretboard down um, and can, uh, learn things quicker and improvise with them. So uh, I showed that scale form. Here would be the next one. One, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one, one, flat seven, five. Now saying it while I do it is, is, is hard. I'm not recommending that you say it while you do it. I'm doing that for you. Four, flat three, one, flat seven, five. But I do want you to see and know what they are. Um, four, flat three, one, flat seven. So you can always come back to this video and pause it and look at the diagrams because I have all the numbers listed there. One, flat three, or that other pentatonic uh, video that I have. One, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one. This is the one everyone knows, right? This scale form. Uh, but how many of us are super aware that that's flat three or that that's flat seven or that that's flat seven there also or that that's four or that that's flat three up there, right? So we want to know all of those um, numbers. So that other common scale form is the next one. Um, after that, we're going to base it off of this root here on the fourth string. This is probably one of the less uh, familiar scale forms in whole, you know, playing the whole scale form because below it, because uh, this is the lowest root right there, and below it we have these notes that uh, we kind of don't see as clearly usually. One, flat seven, five, four, flat three, because the one's there. Right, so you hear that come down to the one. But in the position, we, we have flat three on the bottom, and then four, five, flat seven, one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one, flat three, four. So knowing it this way is also how we don't get the forms confused. And I know it's very common to try to work on scale forms and your fingers kind of play accidentally a different shape, a different a different uh, scale pattern than the one you're trying to go for, because uh, they are so similar. You could be off by one fret and it'll still sound good or sound okay, because you actually switch to playing a different pentatonic scale. So when you're, when you're tracking the theory like this, that is way less likely to happen. Four, flat three, one, flat seven, five, four, flat three, one, flat seven, five, four, flat three, okay. And back on one just to hear that. Cool, one more scale form, and that's this one over here. One, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one, flat three, four, five, four, flat three, one, flat seven, five, four, flat three, one, flat seven, five. This is such a mouthful. Four, five, flat seven, one. Such a mouthful to say it while I'm doing it, but I hope that's that's kind of helpful just to show how, how well we do want to know it that way. Okay, notice I started on the root and ended on the root. That gets me hearing kind of the, the quality of the scale. Um, better than if I landed on, ended on something that wasn't the root. Um, and then this is the same one as we started with. But it'd be cool for this exercise, for this song that we're gonna play. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure you can play it there too. If your guitar, if you're playing acoustic guitar and you can't get up there, don't worry about it. If you can't even get up to that fifth one, don't worry about that too. Just do it where you can on your instrument. Again, if you really need work on just getting the scale forms down, definitely check that video out on just practicing the scale forms because there's a specific way to do it that you can, that helps a ton with internalizing it. Then you can come back and work on this or any song uh, that uses this scale. Okay, the last part, and this is the fun part. This is where it feels like, whoa, I'm really getting the guitar down. We wanna play that riff that we learned 
in all of those positions. So we know the numbers of the riff, we know the numbers of the scale. This could take you a long time, that's totally fine. I mean, the best stuff to practice takes a long time. So be patient if you need to. Um, it's it, If you haven't done this kind of thing before, it will take a long time, but that's why it's worth it. And really, if we're not practicing something like that, that feels like you're really kind of slogging through something new, you're not getting as much out of your practice as you could be, right? It should feel outside of your comfort zone. It should feel hard. It should feel like you can't do it. Um, that's challenging because it can be discouraging. So you want to also just play and have fun and do stuff that you know sounds good. But um, but let this be hard. Let it be slow. Um, it's so worth it to know the fretboard this way. So uh, so here we go. And you could you know write out the numbers and can you do whatever you need to, to have an aid with it. So we already did this. That's the original place. Okay. So now we're gonna go here, and you know I think okay. Well, this is the root of, of the of the scale, and I'm gonna go um, one, one, five, one. But now in this scale form, there's not a five below. I'd have to go down here, which you could do for this exercise, but let's kind of do, just stick within just the scale form position everywhere we can. So um, so actually, this root up here, in this scale form that we're playing now, um, okay, so this is the root right here. So now I'm gonna go root, or I'll just say one, 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 five, one, five, okay? So it's up an octave from the original place, but it's the same thing. Um, and then five, flat seven, one, three, okay? So as you do this, you'll start to see a lot of similarities like this. That part is exactly the same physically as over here. But then because of the tuning of the guitar, there is kind of one little difference uh, with how far you go for the octave and actually how far you go for that five as well. So those little things throw everything off until we do this with music that we love, music that we like, music that we know the sound of, and you do this through all the scale. So now we can't start on this root because that five is way down there below it. So we're gonna do it here. Now this is gonna be a different kind of physical shape. One, one, five, one, five, flat seven, one, flat three. it's obvious why this is so useful because we want the guitar to be secondary to the musical idea right what if we want to play a musical idea we want to express something we don't want that to be a physical thing as much as the the how we play it physically comes after the fact it comes uh if you want to play something that is any sort of melodic material and you know great players are, are doing this all the time it's it's not about um something we memorized physically it's about being able to play that um anywhere any key kind of to express it so so anything we want to play, we should be able to play it in all these different ways. So here's the next one. Here's the root. Okay, root, five, five. I already explained all that, so I'm just going to demonstrate. It's so freeing and so fun. Um, this is something I call repetition with manipulation. Um, we want to repeat. We have to to learn and, and practice and get something done. But we want to repeat it with a challenge, with manipulating it in different ways. If you just repeat the same thing and you stop thinking, you stop trying, you stop having to strive for it, you, you really stop getting better uh, very quickly. You hit, you hit a wall very quickly. Um, and so there may be elements of that that kind of slowly get better when it's a dexterity thing that you just need to move a lot. But with really understanding music as we do that, repetition with manipulation, it is the, the absolute secret, right? And again, let it be slow, let it be hard. That actually means you're getting the most out of your practicing. So I did it there and here's the last position. One, this is gonna be the funkiest one, I think, physically. And just weird. So it's so cool, we're really understanding that. And you can play it in the final place up here, which is just an octave up from where we originally played it. So lastly, the ultimate challenge here is, can we do it in time? Um, you know, once you map all that out, have your, your end game goal be like, all right, I'm gonna test myself if I can play the riff and repeat it as if I'm playing it five or six times in a row, but have it just connect in time every time. That's how you'll really test yourself out of like, cool, I got this down. A really fun challenge to work through. So that would be like this. Just to say again, 
obviously I get excited about this. This is a game changer to practice this way. This is getting your kind of professional skills down on the guitar, whether you want to be a prof professional or not, but kind of like looking at it with, with really a level of understanding and proficiency that again, is just a game changer. What do you think? Is this better than if I just showed you, here's the, here's the fingers, here's the frets, that's how you play it, go impress your friends, right? This is a, a more of a kind of a personal internal experience. Like you might, might have had that feeling of practicing something where you can play it, but you feel like something's missing, right? It's like, uh, I feel like I'm faking people out. Like it sounds good and that's great, um, but do I really get this? Do I really have it, right? So um, I'd be so happy if I could kind of instill that in you, if I could instill that craving or that, that um, you know, that little bit of being unsettled with like, how well do I know this thing with whatever you're playing, right? This drives a lot of high, high quality practicing that anything you're playing, you're still wondering how else can I know it? What else is here for me to, to explore? If you can have that mindset, you will naturally create really powerful exercises for how to keep progressing on the guitar kind of exercises that you know the same types of things that a super experienced teacher might tell you to do because that's all good exercises are filling in gaps where are the weaknesses how do we fill them in so so just that that question always of like how else can i know this but it should be fun also right it should be like an experience exploration, a curiosity, right? Like going to the, to the unknown and, and having it be really exciting. So that's just kind of some of my philosophy on it. And if that's new to you, let me know in the comments if, if how you feel about it. Um, or if also you disagree and you're like, Hey, I just want to play this, like skip all that other stuff. You know, I'd be interested to hear that as well. So let me know in the comments. If you want a free resource for working on the pentatonic scale and getting it down more and more, definitely get my free PDF exercise sheet of the top three pentatonic scale melodic patterns for the guitar. This is for improvising, for internalizing scales. Again, more of that same stuff where how else can we know this? Instead of playing a scale up and down, we want to break it up and jump around with the scale with what are called melodic patterns. So I have a free download for that. Very, very useful, very handy. If you're if you're wanting to get this stuff down, definitely check that out. There's a link in the description. I put out a new lesson video every Tuesday. Next week's video is gonna be more about scales and improvisation. It's gonna be taking those five scale forms and talking about a specific strategy for how to improvise and connect between them. So we're not just kind of stuck in one position at a time where if you've been working on guitar solos or improvising, that's a very common thing to get stuck uh, just kind of in one place. So I have a way of looking at how to kind of bl blend them together and transition between them. That's what I'm going to talk about next week in that lesson. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.